beam for the runway. Head out. Control the pitch, control the bank angle. Nose up. Control the pitch, Dave. Can't wait for the slip episode. Honey? Yeah. Look at this YouTube comment. He says, great video. I can't wait for the slip episode. I thought we weren't doing the slip episode. I know, right? What am I going to do? I guess we're doing a slip episode. I guess I better get to work. Okay. So, yeah. I, I wasn't going to do an episode on slips at all. Like, our, our lessons are an hour to an hour and a half long. And if I put all that footage in, they would just get crazy long and no one would watch. So, I have to cut them down. And then we saw the comment on YouTube, like, as soon as I posted this last episode, as soon as I posted it, there was a comment saying that this particular viewer couldn't wait for the Slips episode. And I felt like I needed to do something about that. Now, I'm not going to call him out publicly, but his initials are P as in Paul, B as in Burgess, if you happen to want to try to sleuth that out a little bit. But seriously, Paul, thanks for the push. Really appreciate it. This is going to be the slips episode, and we're going to show that. It'll be a little bonus. little slip it in there. See what I did there? I'm going to slip the episode into the feed. Yeah. I should probably take that part out. I probably won't. Now, please remember, just like any of the previous episodes, this should not be considered flight training for you. This is a documentary of my flight training experience, and this is me just showing you what it was like when I went through flight training. If you do have any questions about the kinds of things that you're seeing in this, feel free to ask your own flight instructor about this and open a dialogue with him or her. So in part of this lesson, there's times when I want to be able to descend quickly. And what Derek is going to do is show me this technique on how to take this aircraft, this relatively aerodynamic form, and cause a lot of drag. And one of the ways we're going to do that is called a forward slip to landing. And he's going to teach me to take and put in lots of rudder, which turns the airplane this way and presents this large side to the wind and creates lots of drag. Of course, then I have to bank in. So we're gonna learn how to, on final approach, do all of these control inputs to get the aircraft down to the runway very quickly. In order to do that, we're gonna actually, on purpose, start our, our approach too high. So take a look. I'm gonna show you the forward slip to landing. Okay. And the forward slip to landing is that fifth way that we talked about in the briefing that you can get the airplane down without having to use flaps. In fact, in a couple scenarios today, uh, it may have helped you to know how to do that before we did it today. So it'll be interesting. Don't don't do any configuration. Just keep flying down one here. Um, it'll be interesting to see how you use it now that I've showed it to you. Uh, so a forward slip to landing is a way to Use the longitudinal axis as kind of like an air brake, get the aircraft a little bit cross controlled. But you and, don't want to do that with flaps down, correct? Uh, flaps 20 is the limit, but you okay. don't, I don't like to do it with any flaps. Okay. I like to do it without flaps at all. Alright. But you can use a little bit of flaps. Flaps 30 may be a little risky with respect to um, airflow over the tail. So okay. I'm going to extend my downwind just a little bit. I'm going to get on my base. I'm going to slow down to about 70 knots. I'm going to hold 70 knots. And I'm going to. I'm in at B-Ref, or best glide, 65 knots, and I'm going to start a slip when I'm on final. I can even slip it on base a little bit if I want, but I'm going to get it trimmed out right for 70, right? Pitch is going to be used to control airspeed, and the amount of rudder and the amount of aileron I have inside, or in, on the uh, control inputs is going to determine how much I descend at.
put myself in a position where I'm a little high here on purpose so that it makes it really good point of how the slip works. Oh, look at this. Look how high I am. Man, this is dumb. Why'd I do this? Oh, how am I going to get down now? Okay, so I'm going to get on the center line of the runway. I'm going to add right rudder. I'm going to watch my airspeed for 65 knots as I start to slow. I'm going to push right rudder in there. Use pitch, see how I'm using pitch to control airspeed? And an opposite aileron. And I'm coming down pretty quick here. Isn't that cool? Look That's at that. Amazing. All right. And the more rudder I push, the more aileron I need to stay down the center line of the runway. But I can control the airspeed here with the pitch. So that it don't go too fast. If you let it get up to like 90 knots on the slip, you'll never slow down by the end of the runway. There's two reds. I'm going to take the slip out. I see how I got a big boost in airspeed. Yeah. When I took the slip out, turn the car beat off. And then I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do a no flap landing for fun. My pitch attitude and the no flap landing here. This is right. Now take a look here as Derek has landed and he never lets the nose wheel touch down. This is control of an airframe that I just don't get yet. And it's awesome. Alright, we're establishing a climb. That BY-ish. Alright, you have the aircraft. I have the aircraft. In the climb and you're going to show me one of those. Okay. Now the important part about risk management for this maneuver is the speed. So just make sure we don't get too slow. And you really want to maintain the center line. That's a big common error of this, is that people, they just don't maintain the center line at all, and then they end up having to fly all over the place to get to the runway. So control the drift, left and right, across the center line with the ailerons. Use the amount of rudder that you need to control your descent rate. Okay. How much, uh, how much rudder did that take? A lot. Okay. I was to the floor on that one. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna talk you through it this time. We're gonna extend the downwind a little bit, maybe uh, five to 10 seconds. Then we're gonna reduce the power to 1500, turn base, slow to 70 knots, clean, turn final, and then we're on final, we're ready to do the slip, power will come to idle, rudder, and the opposite aileron, maintain the center line, and pitch for the airspeed 65 knots. So that's the 685, runway 9 left, clear touch and go. All right, clear touch and go, 65, 685. If you're listening closely, you can hear that something has happened with the radio after my last transmission. Derek spends a moment trying to figure it out and eventually just changes to the other radio. I'm flying the airplane while he does this, but it still distracts me more than it should. There's a lesson in there for sure. We have a hot mic. Power to 1500. Power to 1500. That's Howard, do you have a hot mic? Step step Go ahead and keep flying. I'll switch it over. I'll put your name in the queue when you taxi out. Okay, so keep flying. Yep, so 1500, turn base. Turn We're, base. We've kind of extended a little bit longer. Good, so add a little power there just to keep yourself high. Tower. Do we have a stuck mic on the other uh, frequency? Was that ours? I have not heard any stuck mics. Okay, thanks. And radio check now. Cool. Albert Tower, exit just 7723 to put a visual nine right. Jet 772 Melbourne Tower, there is traffic for the parallel one with Hatter. Rolling on the right, clear to land, wind zero. Whenever something goes out, just reset it. Alright, so we're where we want to be, so we'll go ahead and pull the power to idle now. Next to Jet 772, would you pull the wind on your left? We kind of got messed up because you were distracted there, but you should have been about 700 pound final. Okay, alright, so go ahead and keep that nose up. Let's get the airplane slowed up. Let's get the airplane slowed up first, so about 70 knots. We'll pull it up above the horizon. Alright, and there's 70 knots of right rudder, left aileron. The nose down, push the nose down. And set a name point. Or right rudder to deepen the flip. And I see you're drifting north, so let it out to turn. No. That nose down. Around. Oh, 
trying to get back to this center a little bit. Yeah, use those ailerons to control the drift. Huh? That nose down a little bit. Huh? Try to remember what the pitch attitude looks like and keep that. And there's one red, and when you get two, I keep five knots minimum speed, and just let it fly down to the runway. That nose up, but don't flare early. They're flaring early, let it down, and then pull up, pull up, pull up. Okay. That car heat off. Runway 9 to right, taxi via Alpha Cross, runway 5. Just those little pitch changes in the round out, just before you get into the flare, are affecting your flare uh, negatively because you're kind of start, you're kind of like seeing the ground coming up at you and you're starting to slowly like pull up. And it's causing you to get a little slow and unstabilized right there at the end. So don't be afraid of the runway. Keep it flying down. That'll make it just a little bit better. And 685 be a full stop this time. 685, runway on your left, clear to land. Clear to land. 685. All right, I should have let you take that one. All right, uh, this time I want you to do another slip, but we'll do it to a full stop. Okay. So it'll be a slip to a flaps up landing. Uh, to a full stop. Okay. All right, so let's try it one more time. This time, you take me through it. I want you to, this time, instead of, uh, like, we got distracted last time, just reduce the power, 1,500 RPM, turn base, hit 1,500 RPM, turn final, make sure you're high, set the slip, and power to idle at 65 knots. Okay. Start idle first, then set the slip. Yeah, that one is, yeah. Roger, caution, white turbulence. Funny how that happens, huh? Yeah. All right, that's straight on the fly. Ready to turn base now. Power to 1500. Time now is 30 and three quarters. Axojet 772, cross runway nine or left at Charlie, then Kilo Kilo 1 to the ramp. Cross a nine or left at Charlie, and then Kilo Kilo 1 to the ramp. Axojet 772. Uh, this That's the 685. There will be uh, traffic crossing and departure into your runway prior to your arrival. Copy that, 685. She's telling you there's traffic crossing the runway. Uh, 124 Sierra Gulf is uh, with Charlie. Okay, nice. Now landing, park south IT. All right, we should be trimmed up for 79. November 4 Sierra Gulf. Right now I'm showing a wind of uh, 080 at 5. Uh, runway 5, please work for you. Runway 5, good. 124 Sierra Gulf. 124 Sierra Gulf, straight in runway 5. Report a one mile final. Mile final for one, two, four, zero, five. Oh, this is nice. Nice and high. All right, power to idle. Power to idle. Let's get, it right. on the, get it on the center line first. Over shot a little bit. 65 knot. Right, right now, set the split. This angle right here shows a really good visualization of where the nose is pointed versus where we're going towards the runway. This is the slip. Is the aircraft entering that fugoid that you let it do? So you've got to positively control the pitch of the aircraft, set it, and hold so it. 685 to the ramp, vehicle back, kilo, kilo one. Go back, kilo, kilo, one to the ramp. 685. Thanks for your help today. You're welcome. All in all, nice 
Nice job. Search for Sierra Golf, runway 5, clear to land. All right, so we have no flaps. We're going pretty fast. Aft stick. We're braking. And max braking on the brakes to turn. Or you turn. All right, that's good. Thank you for not killing me. You're welcome. I try. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching this. It means so much that you guys are joining me and Derek on this journey as I become a private pilot. If we've earned your subscription, that'd be huge. Just click that subscribe button down there. Maybe hit that bell so that you get notified of new episodes. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and maybe share it with some of your friends. That would be amazing. Thank you so much for watching. We will catch you next time when I actually do get into the pattern work that we talked about on the last episode. See ya.